Hey everyone, it's Colin. One of my most popular videos of what I've uploaded so far has been my series about installing a backlit screen in an original Game Boy Advance, one of these guys. It's generated a lot of questions as well. Stuff like, where can you buy the kit? How hard is it to do? The most popular question, or I should say the most common question that shows up in the comments at the bottom of all the videos is, what can I expect out of the battery life after I've modded the console? Logic would dictate that because you're installing a backlit screen that's got LEDs that illuminate the display, it's going to draw more power. So reasonably you'd expect less battery life. I didn't think it would be very much so I kind of guessed that, you know, maybe you'd see an hour less, hour and a half less, something like that. I got to thinking though, is that really true? Is it really just that much less? Maybe it's a lot less. Maybe it's not that much less. Maybe the difference is fairly negligible. So that's what we're going to explore today. So to start, of course, we've got our backlit modded GBA but I don't want to jump into this one just yet. What we need to do is establish a baseline. What I have is an unmodified GBA. This is actually my original one, the one I got back in 2001 or 2002, something like that. Um, it was my, this is actually my very first Game Boy. I never owned one before this. I always wanted one, but never got one. We're going to do some measurements on this guy. For the sake of simplicity, I've built up a bit of a rig here. So this is a 2AA battery holder, and this is simply going to stand in for the battery compartment in the back of the Game Boy. Because of the length of the wires, we should be able to pick up the Game Boy and manipulate it a little bit while we're doing this work. I don't want to just test it with the Game Boy sitting at kind of that default Game Boy logo screen. I want it actually running and doing something because that's going to be more realistic of a number. So let's start out by sticking a cartridge in there. In this case, I'm just going to be doing Super Mario World. Um, seems like a decent one. And for comparison's sake, we'll do a couple of cartridges just to see is there a difference really in, in between the cartridges. And I should note, this is a fairly simple game. Um, games for the Game Boy Advance can get more complicated than this. So we're, we're pretty close to, uh, we were pretty close to 100 milliamps there. So let's just round that out to 100 milliamps and call it good there. So remember that number. Now for the sake of comparison, let's drop a different game in there. So I'm going to pull out Super Mario World. Let's throw in Mario Brothers 3. It's very similar numbers. I know I'm not playing it right on. Oh, I just died. But again, I'm seeing that point, you know, 97, 98 milliamps. Oh, there we go. We just bounced over 100, 101. So let's just say 100 milliamps is going to be our reference number for an average Game Boy Advance game playing in the unmodified console. So what can we do with that number, that 100 milliamps? Well, let's get out a calculator and do some math. And don't worry, this isn't too complicated. Now, I do need to include a little caveat in there and that this is very, very rough math. This is by no means precise or accurate. Trying to calculate battery life is not cookie cutter in any means. You really need to know the intricacies about the device you're trying to measure and the batteries that you're using in order to get any sort of accurate number whatsoever. The formula that I'm going to use here is very, very rough and just for demonstration purposes. We'll see how close we are in the end. I know that the standard Duracell AA batteries that I'm using in my kit here have a milliamp hour rating of 2200. So the formula that we use is 2200, which is our milliamp hour rating, divided by the actual number of milliamps that the device is drawing. So in our case, 100. So 2200 divided by 100 equals 22. 
Now we need to include a little bit of a factor in there because it's not as straight as the battery's getting depleted as the device is drawing current. There are parasitic losses throughout the system. And then also as the voltage changes with the battery getting depleted, it's going to change how much current is drawn and all that sort of stuff. And this is where this formula becomes very rough. We're going to multiply that 22 times 0.7. That's going to be our kind of factor there to accommodate for all the different intricacies of the circuit. So 15.4 is the number of hours on kind of rough average that we will get out of a pair of brand new AA batteries in an unmodified Game Boy Advance console just playing games continuously. Now let's put our modified backlit console in this same test setup and see what numbers we can get off of it. Let's use the same game again just for being consistent. It's a very interesting result that I'm seeing here. Take a look at this. I'm sitting at 81 to 82 milliamps. I don't think I've seen it go above 83. So that's very interesting. We were sitting at about 85 milliamps current draw the entire time, and that's with the backlit screen. Let's do some quick calculation on that and see what kind of battery life we might be able to get out of our modified Game Boy Advance. So let's do the math again. 2200, which is the same milliamp hours before, divided by, in this case, let's say 85. I'll round up a little bit just in case. And then multiply by 0.7 as we did before. 18.11 or so. That's very, very curious and makes me wonder what's going on there. So it's one thing to be doing these kind of back of the envelope calculations with rough formulas and figures. The surefire way to figure out what the story is between these two consoles is to just do a real world test. We'll set these up, put some batteries in them and let them go. So that proved to be a very interesting result, didn't it? I was expecting that all to go completely opposite way. You would think that a non-backlit screen would draw less power than a backlit one. But I suspect really what's going on there is it's simply a matter of technology. That backlit screen is several years newer than the non-backlit one was. And if you kind of read between the lines on Nintendo's website, where they talk about why the Game Boy Advance doesn't have a backlit screen, they really infer that it had to do with cost. So I have a feeling that that reflective color LCD panel is actually very old technology, much older than when the original Game Boy Advance debuted. So that color backlit LCD from the Game Boy Advance SP that we dropped in there, I think is just light years ahead in terms of power efficiency than that old reflective LCD was. 
Hence the reason why the modded Game Boy actually lasts a significant margin longer than the original unmodded version. So the results that we saw of the Game Boy lasting about 20 hours on a pair of AA batteries was also a little bit interesting, but I think there's an explanation for that. Our calculation said that you should be seeing about 15, 15 and a half hours out of a pair of fresh alkaline AA's. And indeed, Nintendo's own website also says 15 hours is about what you should expect. I think that's simply because during that time lapse, the Game Boys were in demo mode. They were just cycling through the demo screen and not actually being interacted with or played. I did a little bit of testing off camera and indeed found that the Game Boys drew about 15 to 20 milliamps more power than they did when they were simply sitting at the demo screen. So playing the game definitely causes the Game Boys to deplete the battery faster than simply being turned on. And so, you know, the numbers that we actually saw on the time lapse are probably a little bit inflated, but because both Game Boys are doing the same thing, I'd still say it's a valid test. I think what this really means is we can expect probably what Nintendo suggests you should see for the unmodded console, about 15 hours. I also think that that means that our calculations are still fairly valid. I'm going to say that number of 18 hours or so is really what you should be seeing on the modded console. So with all that in mind, ultimately it's kind of surprising that maybe you should be doing this mod. I know I've had mixed feelings on it in the past. Some people saying this is a great mod, you should do it. Lots of people scrambling to try and find those kits. Apparently they are becoming harder and harder to find as time has gone on and demand has risen. But, you know, it's still, it's still really kind of up in the air as to whether you want to incur the expense and potential frustrations of having to deal with that mod. So, I'm going to say if you're a hardcore original Game Boy fan, you don't want to deal with an SP, go ahead, do the mod. It's probably worth it in the end, especially when you get to reap the benefits of not only the backlit screen, but also better battery life. If you don't really want to deal with it, if you're not a very hands-on person, I'd say just forget it. Go find yourself an AGS 101. You'll spend 50 to 60 bucks on one, but it's really going to be the best kind of out of the box Game Boy Advance playing experience that you can possibly get. So all in all, we ended up with a fairly educational experience this time around, didn't we? If you learned something from this video or at least got some entertainment value out of it, please do me a favor and give me the thumbs up. I appreciate those quite a bit. I have new videos coming out every Tuesday. If you'd like to see more of those and get notified to them automatically, do become a subscriber. Click the button right down there. And as always, thank you all so much for watching.